Praise the Lord. It's good to be uh, online with everyone this morning. And I'm hoping everybody ha is having an excellent Independence Day. And our God is good. So we're going to go ahead and get on into this message and everything. So the word tells us as we enter into the praise and uh, worship portion of the church service, the word says, bless be the Lord, my strength which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. And on that, brothers and sisters, because our God is good and that we can put our trust in him and we can follow him, let us lift up our hands to the Lord and praise and bless his holy and wonderful name. Heavenly thank Father, we thank you, dear Jesus Lord Lord God, Lord, for your mercy Lord. and your grace. Yes, Lord, dear Lord, Lord, we God. thank you because you are the yes, King Jesus. and you are the Lord, and we honor you as, yes, as our Lord. Creator, Lord. our faithful Lord. Creator. Lord. And we praise yes, you this Jesus. morning Hallelujah. in Jesus' Jesus. wonderful name. Amen. Amen. All right. And uh, over in the comments section, there should be a link there where you can give. You can just click on that link and you can give and remember all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And we, uh, we appreciate your giving and everything. So let's go ahead and pray over the gift and the giver this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you will bless both the gift and the giver, that it may go to uh, meet the needs of your work, dear Lord, we ask all these things in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So our Lord is good. And also I want to say happy birthday to Brother Chris Allen. Happy birthday. Amen. And um, I know you're getting on up there, man. So and, and the Lord is good, right? I want to give him a, a big shout out. And also want to give a shout out to his wife, uh, Sister uh, Natalie Allen want to give a shout out to her also and want to say hello to everybody that's online and we're looking forward to a good time this morning right and so also be mindful of church worship service is going to be tonight an in-house gathering at the first presbyterian church on mulberry street and first street and so we're going to be uh, holding services in their small chapel right there on the side so uh, of the church, of the main church. So you'll be able to see it. Just come on. And if you get confused, just call 478-733-9937 and we will get you there. Okay. So our God is good. So uh, on Independence Day, it's a blessing to be worshiping the Lord in freedom, right? It's a wonderful thing to worship God in freedom. And we're coming over to the book of John chapter 8. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. And I'm turning to it. I know it's already up there on the screen. So let's look and see what the Lord will do. All right, let's read this word. It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How says thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Right? Ain't that good? Amen. That's some powerful Bible reading. The word of God, there's deliverance throughout all the scriptures. You need deliverance of whatever sort. God is able, right? Through the reading of the word and through, through the application of it. But we want to preach on the message entitled or teach or instruct on the message entitled Achieving a Personal Independence Day. Amen. Achieving a Personal Independence Day. 
And so to God be all of the glory, right? To the Lord be all of the glory. You can blame all the mistakes on me, but the Lord is not going to waste your time, right? I may make a mistake, whatever, in my English, but guess what? The message will be clear this morning. And God wants to speak to all of our hearts because of who he is, because he loves us. Yes. And he's concerned about each and every individual uh, who is listening online. And again, it's not by mistake that you are hearing this message, whoever you are. It's not by mistake that you are hearing this message. God has purposed it to where we can get a hold of this thing this morning, right? This video, which is live, you, you can get a hold of this, that we can apply it to our life. And as we've said, look for the game changers in this church service that will bless your soul, right? Amen. That will bless your world. So with that being said, achieving a personal independence day, let us pray. Sister Davis, if you don't mind asking the Lord's blessing on this worship service, please. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your words of truth, power, and encouragement. Lord, I pray that you would give us ears to hear and hearts ready and, and anxious, really, to receive what you have for each of us individually, Lord. For you know our laying down and our rising up. You are acquainted with all of our ways, Lord. And Father, it's not a coincidence, Lord, that those who are listening and will be listening are hearing this message. Father, I pray also that you would make preaching easy for the man of God. Lord, I pray that you would fill his mind with your thoughts and your, his mouth with your words, Lord. Father, that your will may be accomplished in this service. Father, I also pray that you would just send your Holy Spirit on each one, Lord. Father, let them feel your presence, God. And Father, we are careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for whatever is accomplished in this service. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to get on with it. Our God is good again. And uh, this day is a very important day. Especially when you look back at the history of how America had came about, how that uh, it was the British soldiers who were walking through the streets of Boston. And just to keep uh, America pretty much under the control of King George, who uh, was over the slave trade and everything, right? And who was taxing the living daylights uh, out of the United States or out of out of uh, America then was, was kind of taxing us and everything and marching in our streets. But the people of Boston pretty much got sick and tired of it. And uh, and they began to scoff at the soldiers. They began to, uh, uh, no doubt, perhaps throw rocks at them, picking on them and stuff. But then they decided to fix bayonets on us. And their uh, people had died from that. And it was not about the color of skin. Amen. It was an attack on this country yes. to keep the country in bondage, to keep them under slavery and everything. Amen. King George wanted to make a slave not, not out of just black people being sold into slavery, but also because he was in charge of the slave trade of which a, a lot of whites were trying to get him to stop that. Yes. But the thing is, he did not, not was he making money off of blacks, but he was making money off of whites too. Yes. All of America, he tried to rule us all and yes. be a dictator over us all. But America stood up because 56 men decided we're not going to take his mess. And they came together. I believe it was called the Continental Congress. That first meeting, they all came together. These leaders of the country at that time uh, came together and they signed their name on uh, the Declaration of Independence, which was a signature, uh, really was a death signature if everything would have, if things would have went wrong. But America was able to overcome, gathering people together, creating a, an, an army of blacks and whites. It did not matter. Whoever wanted freedom yes. was to get into this army and they fought for it. And here we are today, this is in a nutshell, enjoying the uh, Independence Day. Blacks and whites and all of uh, uh, all races, 
all people who have come over here and have became a citizen of this country, right, is enjoying Independence Day because of 56 men who said we want freedom or death, right? And this morning, we want to talk about achieving a personal Independence Day Amen. from evil and from the devil. And as we get into this, the word tells us in starting this message out and getting this going, because it's all about having a personal independence day, right? Because we were born dependent on sin. We were born uh, not knowing God in a reality. Yes. And so this message is intended to help us to come up. And if we would just listen and apply this, it will help us. To no end. The word says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, right? This is coming out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. It talks about we walk according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Follow me this morning. Satan's primary objective is to make a slave out of you and keep you dependent on his dainties. Just to soon be separated for eternity away from God, right? That is what the prince and the power of the air wants to do. He wants to... Uh, he wants to make us a slave and keep us dependent on his dainties, right? Dependency on something makes that something lord over the person. Whatever the person is dependent on is the very thing that becomes that person's lord, right? That thing lords over that individual, whatever the object is. The word says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So the thing all this is about, the prince and the power of the air is trying to keep people under his thumb, right? He's trying to keep people under his will. The word tells us again in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will, right? People are taken captive uh, of the devil uh, by his will. In the dainties of the devil is pleasure laced with sorrow, y'all. Because of appetite for pleasure, people unawarely are taking heaps of sorrow, becoming more and more dependent on the tyrannical dictator, right? So people, when they go after the pleasures of sin, they go after the pleasures of the self, without being aware of it, they heap upon themselves sorrow for Sin does not come without a price, right? right? It does not come without something uh, uh, costing you loss, right? right? Whenever a person breaks the word of God, that is what sin is. Whenever a person is not walking along with the Lord because of the fact that they uh, they look at the, uh, the breaking of the commandment of God in that particular situation, a blessing for them, right? I need to do this to be blessed. They break the word of God. They don't keep the word of God. They don't want to acknowledge the Lord because of accountability to God. They don't want to be accountable to anyone. They run loosely in their life in the name of freedom when they are doing the will of the devil and in their movement, 
in their motion, in the will of Satan, right? They are bringing on their life and on their family without being aware of it, hurt and pain, right? They bring upon their family, uh, uh, their, their, their morale is, is, is pretty much destroyed, right? They begin to bring sadness without being aware of it because of the fact that their activity is consistently against God and they are dependent on the pleasure of Satan, right? They're dependent on the pleasure of sin because there is pleasure uh, in sin for a season, else people would not do it. There is pleasure there, but back of it is sorrow, y'all. Back of it is sorrow. And so, and that's the reason why uh, this morning a lot of people are hurting because without realizing it, they their sinful activity is bringing destruction on their life, yes, right? Yes. The very music that's against God is feeding their heart, right? And in the feeding of the heart, when the seeds are placed in the mind of the person, that seed begins to breed more seeds, right? Yes. To to the point where they are so full of the movement of those things that are against God, such as the music that they listen to, yeah. such as the conversations that they are into, yeah. such as the negativity that's, that's uh, against the Lord Jesus himself, right? They don't realize that they are heaping to themselves these little seedlings that are birthing more seeds in their thought, in right. their thought processes, in their brain, right? And it begins to take over. It begins to take over uh, their, their heart because their heart is un, unguarded and they are controlled. Their every waking moment is in motion of violating God. And doing things that is against the Lord. But it's enough pleasure in it to keep them on it. It's enough pleasure in it to keep them in bondage. It's enough pleasure in it to keep them a slave. And Jesus said that a slave does not abide in the master's house for, forever, right? Because sooner or later, the master is going to kick him out. The master is going to say, back to, back to the field. The master is going to say, I don't want to have anything to do do with you because the destructive master does not care about the slave. He'll treat the slave any old kind of way, right? King George wanted to treat us all any old kind of way, right? He did not care about your, the color of your skin. He was all about the money, right? Satan don't care about the color of your skin. Satan don't care where you come from. He, he hopes that you think that he's a joke, right? Because if you think that he's a joke, that means that you don't believe that Jesus ever walked the face of the earth, right? If you think that Satan never existed, you think that the devil's not real, that means you don't think that there's a real God. He has you and you find pleasure in it because there's no accountability. When destruction awaits the unbeliever who says that I don't believe it, because regardless of whether or not you believe, you still got to die. I still have to die. The spirit has to depart. And let me tell you, the slave is destroyed. Those who are dependent on the devil is destroyed because they found pleasure in a life of no accountability. Reaping heaps of sorrow upon themselves Dur during the duration of their life and in the afterlife. Why? Because when a person is not accountable, they become lawless and disrespectful while they're living. They become lawless and disrespectful to the police officers. They become lawless and disrespectful to rulers and leaders because in them is the spirit of rebellion. And rebellion is punished by mankind Walking on this earth, if you break the law, you're going to be punished. And some people don't understand where the lawlessness come from inside of them. Yes. The lawlessness come from inside of them because of the fact that they have no respect for God. And if they cannot respect God, how in the world they're going to respect the laws of man? That's right. right? Because people who respect the Lord, people who fear God, they're going to be law abiding. See, sorrow comes. 
Sorrow comes when a person loves rebellion. There is pleasure in being rebellious because of the fact that it brings you encouragement and, and you feel like, yeah, I'm going against the grain, but rebellion has a price. Yes, it does. And sometimes it could be jail. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it could be the it could be the death penalty. Because of rebellion, people violate the law. It feels good, but it can wind up in jail. It feels good, but it can wind up with a broken relationship. It feels good, but it can wind up in with losing a job. It feels good, but it can wind up to us inflating this government because of the way that we vote. And the next thing you know, we're under a dictator in the United States of America. Some crazy idiot up in office. Yes. Who is telling us to, what to do in our in our every waking moment, waking moment. Everywhere we look around, the government is telling us what to do. Why? Because of the fact that in the name of having pleasure in sin for a season. All right. Right. In the name of having pleasure in. Well, I, I just don't I don't I don't want to I want to rebel against authority. I'm going to rebel against God because to rebel against God is to inflate government. See, y'all ain't listening to me this morning because it's the truth, right? But if we take the truth, the truth will make us free. Because let me tell you, a big Jesus means a small government. And a big government means a small Jesus. Our Lord is good and God wants us to live in freedom. The Lord wants us to be free, right? Amen. People uh, f think that living in fornication, hey, yeah, it's pleasure, right? Yes. But in the back of forn fornication shows no commitment. In the back of form fornication, uh, you can get even disease from it. Because you get with the wrong person, that wrong person can bring syphilis on you. See, they don't yes. want to talk about that, right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if we're unfaithful in small things, we're going to be unfaithful in bigger things because the lack of discipline, right? The lack of virtue leads to other lacks of virtue. If we lack here, we lack in somewhere else. Something's going to hit us in the back door, right? And it is. And the thing is, it's enough pleasure to keep you on it in spite of the sorrow that we get. There's some people go from divorce to divorce, and so they want to shack up now. <laughs> and they and because they don't want to be committed, because their commitment has been broken down, and they find themselves, hey, I can't even be committed over here, and I need to be committed over here. Yeah. I need to be committed, but I don't have it in me. Why? Because I started a cycle in my life, and I've been hooked on this thing of lack of commitment uh, to the point where uh, I'm taking a lot of sorrow, but I like the pleasure. Hmm. And you wonder why. The Lord, here in the word of the Lord, Jesus said, the servant abideth not forever. Because one of these days, he's going to get kicked out. One of these days, he's going to find out the truth about his master. Amen. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, uh, the Bible calls the, me <coughs> the meats of the wicked <coughs> deceitful. Deceitful meat, according to the book of Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. The word tells us in Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 through 8, it says, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligent, diligently what is before thee. And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. It says, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Then it says, labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. It says, wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is nothing? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Then it says, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat 
and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words, right? When we get a, when we start getting into sin and in the motion of sin, we we begin to go uh, and take uh, the meat of the of the prince and the power of the air. That spirit which is which influences people and gives them enough pleasure to be hooked on it, right? To be hooked on his will so that he can have them do his bidding. We keep doing that stuff over and over again. Uh, one of these days we're gonna throw it all up, right? We're gonna uh, one of these these days it's gonna get so irritating but here's the problem though people go right back to that which they've thrown up and they lap it right back up mm -hmm. as a dog that goes to his vomit sniffs it and begins to eat it up again and they wind up getting sick again and they don't know where it's coming from All right. what's wrong with my life what's wrong with people's life is the fact that it's enough pleasure coming from their sinful activities to keep them hooked on it to where they are reaping, they are reaping sorrow from what they're doing. Sorrow comes from the person's ways. All right. It comes from the person's ways and it has people in slavery because they don't say, I wanna be made free. But Jesus this morning came to set people free. Jesus came to get us off of this stuff. Listen to, to this, y'all. Listen to this for a moment. Come back to me. Truth of any fashion is what sets people free from lies and make-believe of any fashion that brings bondage, confusion, and sorrow on the person. Let me say that again because I got to repeat myself because some of us are missing it because we're not focusing and we need to focus on this. Truth of any fashion is what sets people free from lies and make believe of any fashion that brings bondage, confusion, and sorrow on the person. Some people live in lies. Yes. They, their whole life is centered upon make believe. And they don't realize that the lies that their life is centered on and the make-believe that they're centered on, it has chains all over them. All right. And it does not matter what area of our life where the lies and the make-believe is at. Game changer. Right. I cannot stand make-believe, right? I personally cannot stand someone blowing a bunch of smoke. All right. But give us the truth, because truth will set the person free. Amen. Have you ever heard this before? If someone had only told me the truth about that. Amen. Right? Have you ever been there before? If someone had only told me the truth about that. And here this morning, the Lord is wanting to bring some truth. Why? Because Jesus does not want to make a slave out of you. And I'm going to prove that to you in a moment. And Jesus wants you to be set free because he abides forever because he's God's uh, son. Amen. And I'm going to show this to you in a moment here. Here in the word of the Lord, uh, Jesus began to make a statement. He said, again, going back to the title, he, he said this. He said, he said, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, on him, excuse me. <clears throat> if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. Indeed, he said, you got to continue. He's talking to people who believe on him. He said, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, free from all lies, free from make believe, free from being uh uh, from being clouded when it comes to looking at sin. All right. Because some people only see the pleasure side, but the truth will expose all sides of that thing from the pleasure all the way over to the sorrow. Because, and the sorrow is bigger than the pleasure, right? It's pleasurable to sleep, but it, but the thing is, if you have something to do, you have something that needs to be done, then you might wind up 
getting a call from the IRS because you slept on it, you procrastinated on it because it was pleasure in doing that procrastination thing. When the Bible tells us to be fervent in spirit, right? I'm trying to help someone to let them see that yes, there's pleasure in sleeping at the wrong time, but because it's at the wrong time, here comes the sorrow, loss of job, all kind of stuff can take place, right? Somebody getting killed, somebody getting hurt. If you're a soldier, you're sleeping, the enemy is out there. And, and because you're enjoying your sleep, but the enemy is out there. And while you sleep, he kills your friend when you should have been awoke. Why? Because you were enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. You were in bondage to the, to the sinful activity of sleeping all the time. When the Bible says love not sleep, I'm using sleep for an example because this thing is real, right? In your make-believe mind, you begin to think that that was better than protecting your friend. And now he's dead because I slept on the job. Because I fornicated against God and against my wife or whoever, or against my body, because I uh, cursed that person out and did not realize it was staring at up something in me, because I lied about that, right. because I fibbed on that. I've done this and I've done this and, and that and the other. I rebelled against God. I even put uh, put tattoos all over my face to make myself look look funny and everything. And and now uh, all of a sudden now I want to get rid of it and I cannot get rid of this tattoo that's anti-God. I'm trying to help someone. Look, y'all, sin, every sin against the Lord. <laughs> There's a sorrow against it. Yes. There's a sorrow against you. It's poisonous to you, right? And I'm trying to bring it out because I want it to be real to us. You can live in sin. Yes. You can go ahead and do it. But you don't know what you're getting. I went up to, to visit someone. I went, whoo, Lord. I actually, I kind of enjoyed myself because of the fact that I knew. Because I did not like the environment. I enjoyed myself. I said, I'm glad I don't like this. That means I'm not going to let it enter into me because I don't like it. Yes. I hated it. Amen. So I sat there confidently smiling, kind of like, wow, so this is what they do. Mm -hmm. Right? And all the while, all this bad music with kids, children. <laughs> you got babies. In the name of having a family, a good family time at this certain place, man, you got babies, dog listening to music blaring and curse words everywhere and I just I went because I, I know I didn't know what it was but I went to to visit someone and I said wow this is what they do huh mm -mm -mm. and I hated it but at the same time my heart was guarded I said, mm -mm. and I got up out of there and went on about my business they can have that and they wonder why they wonder why they can't even see it. And you can't tell them nothing. You can't tell them nothing. Man, what, what are you doing that, man? Don't you know that's the reason why your life is wrecked? Yes. But they get mad because you're taking away their pacifier that has poison on it. And they don't know it. They don't even know it. Listening to the wrong music because it make you feel good. Mm. Right? Right. This music make me feel good, but what's the content? Yes. What's the content? And, and not realizing that you're planting seed, a seed from the song because you're emotionally uh, receptive of it. And you like even what it's saying. All right. It's, it's, it's a big deal to you. You love it, man. And now that seed that's in there is spreading every day because you even know the lyrics mm. you know how to recite the lyrics of a foul song and not realizing that you're sucking on the devil's pacifier all right it's sweet yes but there's something going down inside of the person that's poisonous 
and they wonder why they got beat down in a fight. <laughs> they wonder why they're in jail. They wonder why I have problems with my girl, man. And then here's the funny thing, though. After they have problems with their girl because they ain't married, mm. they get in the car. And they crank up the same song again and begin to rap to it. Do just rapping to it in the name of relieving themselves, not realizing that all they're doing is watering the seed. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they're dependent on that for yes. relief. Yes. <laughs> for relief from a problem that they have. Not realizing that they are bringing poison on them. Hey, man, I'm telling you, this thing is real, man. The older I get in this thing, the the, the more, I don't know. I hope y'all getting it. And again, the truth of any fashion is what sets people free from lies and make believe of any fashion. That brings bondage and confusion on us and sorrow on the person. Jesus came to set men and women free, right? He said, the thing is, if you would know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Jesus is the truth this morning. Right. If someone says, I don't want one lie in my heart, right? I don't want anything that's made up. I don't want make-believe uh, living in my life, right? I don't want uh, to be influenced by the devil. I don't want to be influenced by his dainties. Right. Because let me tell you something, God has some dainties too, right? He has pleasures too, right? But he addeth no sorrow to it. Yes. It's not laced with sorrow, y'all. It's not laced up. Amen. You know how these people, these people be lacing stuff up with rat poison and all kind of stuff to make it bigger so they can get more out of you. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. God won't even give you a drug, number one. Amen. And when God gives you something, it won't be laced. Right. It won't be laced. It won't be laced. And he gave us Jesus. Jesus is not laced with sorrow. The blood of Jesus doesn't have any poison in it. And he'll make you a child of God. Yes. He'll make you, you become his friend, right? Because the word of the Lord tells us in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 13 through 15, the book of John, chapter 15, verse 13 through 15 says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants. He said, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. This is the difference here. Amen. This is the difference here. We are our friends. We become friends of God through the acceptance of the words of Jesus. We become friends of God through the acceptance of the blood of the Lord. And yes, Paul, yes, he said, I am a servant, but it's on a friendship plateau with God. It's on a childhood plateau with the Lord. We follow the Lord as dear children, Amen. not servants. Amen. We follow God as dear children, dear unto God, precious unto the Lord. Because let me tell you something. Uh, God is all about us. Yes. And in turn, we show love back to him. We are all about him. Amen. That's how it works. And no one can outgive God. But let me tell you something. You can outgive the devil. <laughs> you sure can. Because he ain't giving nothing. He's in the taking business. Yes. The, the word of the Lord tells us that the thief cometh but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. Let's do this. Again, the thief cometh but to take, take, and take. Mm -hmm. That's what the, the thief cometh for. And he does not want a fool to become smart enough to realize, and, hey, I'm hurting myself. 
I'm hurting myself living in sin. I'm hurting my le- myself listening to sinful music. I'm hurting myself listening to things that are destructive to me and my wife and my sons and my daughters, right? They wonder why they're so abusive. Look at what they're taking in. Mm. They wonder why uh, they can't keep a job. Look at what they're taking in. They wonder why they cannot even stay committed to the Lord. There are some people who have... Tr- who have come to God for two minutes, right? Because they never really exercise, stand committed to anything. Yes. They're sinful toward everything. They're sinful toward the for to toward anything that requires commitment. Because out of the name of pleasure, I need to be committed to my own selfish ways, and that's not even commitment. All right. Out of the name of pleasure, they can't be committed to nothing can't stick to anything. Anything can wash them out. Out of the name of pleasure, when things get hard, it's time to quit. And they've been quitters before they came to the Lord, right? They can't, they can't serve God for a week. One battle, they out. Two months. I give them a week. Let's talk realistically. When a newcomer comes to Christ, give them three weeks. See if they can make it through the first three weeks. In the name of pleasure, they'll quit. Why? Because of the fact that they've exercised sin for so long. They they cannot stick to Jesus like they should. They cannot stick to three-week syndrome. But you know what? Let me tell you, when you have a desire, like those 56 men who said, you know what, I'm going to sign my name to this thing. Those 56 men that are a, and we are enjoying the fruit of their commitment. Yes. We are enjoying it. You can talk junk about it, but you're going to barbecue today. And you're going you're gonna to enjoy the 4th the, 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 uh, of July, right? Even the fakers are going to enjoy the 4th of July, right? And the work behind it. Is the men who said, give me freedom or I'll die. And we fought. And if we had lost that battle, King George would have hung all those 56 men. And guess what? King George and people under King George, there wouldn't have been a a mess what you call it, emancipation of proclamation. There wouldn't have been none of that. We could still be slaves today. And I'm talking to to uh, to uh, to all of us. Amen. In particular, blacks. All right. We could be slaves today, but what for those fifty-six men? Show sure can. So we need to enjoy the red, white, and blue. Amen. We don't even. Some of us don't even have enough about us. We listen to the lies of the media concerning uh, 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 the Independence Day. You need to read it. You need to find an old book on it yes. and study it out. And it'll bring you to tears because you really find out what Independence is all about. Independence Day is all about. Yes. You need to read it because when I read it for the first time and really absorbed it, I moved with emotions about it. And I can see things trying to get destroyed. And, and I hope that they never get rid of this day. Because if they're due, we're done. Over here, dependent on the government, yes. This government wants us dependent on it. Want to make God small. And it goes beyond the government. It's the spirit behind the government that does that do not want us to testify of the Savior. That's what this is all about. It is an attack on Jesus. It's an attack on the Lord, y'all. Y'all better watch it now. Y'all better watch it. Know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you want Jesus this morning, if we want to be saved, but you're going to have to pray for his grace, and you need to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? And we're going to pray this morning. If you want to be made free, you tired of sin, and you can see and God's dealing with you about the sorrow that comes behind living a life, a living a lie. The sorrow that comes behind living make-believe. There's a man, I said, I don't want to do your wedding because all it is is putting chocolates over worms. 
I saw the worms in that thing. It's so phony. You like to be phony? You don't, you don't, you don't want to be phony? Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for all the things that you have done. And Lord, we thank you for this nation that has given us freedom to worship you. Where we can freely speak yes. of your goodness and not have to go underground and, and have to have to have Bibles uh, smuggled to us. Yes, Lord. And Lord, and also speaking of that, God bless our brothers and sisters in China. Yes. Keep your hand upon th those people who are being persecuted by their wicked government. Yes, Lord. And in Korea, North Korea. And all yes. around uh, the world yes. that we don't even see yes. and, and can't even appreciate because we're not in the same mess. Yes. And dear Lord Jesus, for those who want, deli want deliverance this morning, pray after me. Father, I thank you for sending the truth, Jesus, to die on the cross for my freedom. Lord, I sever ties with the devil and sin. And I'm joining you through Jesus because this morning I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And God, let me live in your freedom from this day forward. And God, give me the grace to stay committed to my dedication to you. And Lord, I will not back up. I will not back down because I know that in you is pleasure also and greater because there's no sorrow added to it. In Jesus' mighty name, I've surrendered all. Amen. 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 It's been good to be in church, y'all. It's been wonderful. And we hope that you live, keep living for God. If those, if there was a newcomer that came on, someone that's new listening, keep living for God. Keep listening to the word of the Lord. You got to hear the words over and and over and over again because what you're doing is you're feeding your mind right you have to continuously especially in that beginning don't miss any church worship services right yes. stay hooked on the bible studies and read your word yes. because you need a uh a snowball a word coming to you yes. a snowball effect of preaching coming to you constantly constantly because you're washing stuff out of you yes. and putting new stuff in you yeah. that will maintain that born again life yes right Hallelujah. so let's live in freedom don't go to the devil don't live for the devil don't live in sin it is better to live for god and the lord is good so anyway hey check this out y'all again church tonight church is tonight at uh 6 30 and uh at the first presbyterian church on mulberry street and first street so arrive there by six or 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 earlier try to get there by six though don't don't get there right at 6 30 because you might get confused you, you're there at 6.15, my phone could be off, you know what I'm saying, or the phone's could. So so try to get there early. You will see, it'll be obvious when you pull up to the church, you will see where we're having church at, okay? So may God bless you real good. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. So uh, may God bless you real good. Love y'all. Enjoy your Independence Day.